Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to be talking about this little board which I designed and assembled myself. It's a breakout module for the FTDI FT232H, which is a USB to serial converter but with a nice twist. This particular chip from FTDI has the built in multi protocol synchronous serial engine. MPSSE for short, which allows you to run a variety of synchronous serial protocols like JTAG, I2C, SPI or just simple bit banging of the available IOs. You can imagine it can be really useful to be able to interface with a sensor over I2C or SPI straight from your computer over USB through this interface. You wouldn't need an Arduino or other controller in the middle if you plan to do some data acquisition, for example. Before I walk you through the hardware features present on this board, let me present the sponsor of this video, jlcpcb.com, which provides the PCBs used in these projects, as well as the parts which are shipped from LCSC. As usual, the quality of the PCB is top notch and I will be releasing the design files for this project. There will be a link in the description below the video. You can use the Gerber files to order the PCBs from JLC PCB and build your own breakout board. Now, in terms of hardware on this board, we have the FT232H chip in LQFP package. We have the required bypass caps as recommended in the data sheet. We have a 12 MHz resonator, some signaling LEDs, some filtering on the power lines. The chip has built in 3.3 volts and 1.8 volts LDO, which is capable of 50 mA output. We have some ESD protection on the USB input and the external I2C EEPROM that is used for configuring the chip. The chip will still work even with a blank EEPROM or without an EEPROM, but if you want to use some of the advanced functions, you can save uh, the config in this EEPROM, so it's nice to have it on the breakout board. IO pins are 5 volts tolerant, so you can connect this to an Arduino running at 5 volts, as well as Raspberry Pi running at 3.3 volts. I won't bore you with the details of how I assembled this board, I just used the classical method of uh, stencil, applying solder paste, placing the components and then reflowing on my hot plate, which you can check out in uh, Vollog 210. I think the most interesting part would be to show you how you can actually interface this with the computer and use some of those serial protocols. There are several options here. The first option would be to use the drivers and libraries offered by FTDI. These are libraries that allow low level access to the functions of the chip. Then there are libraries built on top of this, which abstract some of the functions, making it easier for the final user or applications. Some are open source and even provide an interface for Python, like the PyFTDI library. And that's what I'm going to use today in this video. Now, obviously developing with Python is going to be easier on Linux or Mac than it is on Windows. So I started with a fresh Ubuntu instance. I then followed the instructions in PyFTDI documentation. I install libusb first because it is required by pyftdi. I needed to create a udev configuration file to allow user space processes access to the ftdi devices connected via USB. And I also needed to add the user to the group plug dev. After this, you can check if everything is OK by running these Python lines. It should return the ftdi device, in my case, it's the FT232H. Next, you can install PyFTDI and its dependencies using pip. This worked without any problems on my system and from this point forward, everything should be up and running. I decided to borrow this uh, I2C scan program from PyFTDI's documentation. I've connected an I2C sensor to my FT232H and run the program which correctly identified my sensor present on the bus at address 48 hex. This pretty much confirms everything is functional. From this point forward, you could write your own program to interact with the I2C bus. The documentation is pretty good and gives you examples. You can also play with the other interfaces like SPI or UART or even Bitbank, all the IOs available on the board. Everything is explained in the documentation of the API. If you're a frequent Python user, I'm sure you'll appreciate having this new way of interacting directly with the hardware. I can't say I've used Python before, this is the first time for me, but I've decided to learn more about Python and maybe use it in future projects. 
it's up to you to decide if it's worth building your own FT232H breakout board or buy one ready-made. You can certainly find ready-made ones which are pretty cheap on AliExpress or Banggood, but should you decide to make your own, you can find the design files in the description below the video, as well as links to the ready-made boards on AliExpress. But I would recommend you give this chip a try, it's pretty versatile and I can tell you that there were times where I wished I had something like this to interface a sensor directly to the PC. This can be extremely useful for debug purposes. I hope this was interesting for you, I hope you learned something new today, I certainly did. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon, thank you for watching and I will see you next time with a new video.